I'm Stanley Tusade, a retired professor from Dallas Theological Seminary. I retired from the seminary about three years ago. I've had the privilege for teaching here for 47 years. I go back so far, I had Chuck Swindoll and David Jeremiah and other luminaries as students. But I'm not just proud of or thankful for these students, I'm also very thankful for those who have ministered in the jungles of Africa or in some podunk center in the United States. I, have, I taught in, th in two departments. First of all, I taught in the New Testament department, and then I was in the pastor for several years, and the seminary asked me to come back, and this time I came back into the Bible exposition department, of which I finally became uh, the chairman of it. I've enjoyed this department very, very much. The class that I've been assigned is Bible Exposition 106. The catalog of the course description says, an exposition of Acts and 10 of the Pauline epistles, all except Romans, Ephesians, and Philippians. Those three books are taught in the New Testament department. And we have a class that I call the drip pan class for people who, are, who do not have the expertise in Greek or Hebrew and still need these courses and they're taught from the English text. So they're taught with an emphasis on the biblical theology of these books, their genre and application. Prerequisites or co-requisite BE 101 Bible study methods and hermeneutics and BE 105 the Gospels and ultimately the course is a three-hour course. I'd like to teach three books that are in this course, Acts and Galatians and 1 Corinthians. The book of Acts is a fascinating book. It's unique. There's no book like it in the New Testament. Many talk about it as being a book of history. It's not that. As they say in Texas, that dog won't hunt. Or as they say in New Orleans, that horn won't honk. Or in Minnesota, that boat won't float. Uh, it's not a history because you don't find anything about the church going to Egypt or the church going to India. It's very specific. In fact, there are only two main characters, Peter and Paul. The other apostles are passed over. James, the apostle, is dismissed with one brief mention, or excuse me, with a brief incident of his being martyred for the sake of Christ in Acts chapter 12. It's obvious Luke is choosing his materials very, very carefully to prove a point. And the issue is, what is he trying to say? So I'll go through the book of Acts, uh, emphasizing what the argument of the book is about. And then we'll also stress problem passages. There are a number of problem passages in the book. We hope to cover that book, and in, in, we are intending to cover it, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday mornings. Galatians, which again is a crucial book. It was Martin Luther's favorite New Testament book. It is a miniature Romans, and we'll cover that, Lord willing, on Thursday morning. And then on Friday we'll cover 1 Corinthians. Now 1 Corinthians is 16 chapters, but I will hand out a sheaf of notes that I've made on the book so that we, you will know what I take and then we can discuss the problem passages in the book. I'm looking forward to this course. It's a very, very interesting course. Crucial issues will be brought up. And by the way, I also take time in the class to make applications to life from what these books teach. It's going to be a very, very interesting study. Uh, I'd like to point out what you may do in preparation for the class. I want you to read the books of Acts and Galatians and, and 1 Corinthians in the last two months before the class. I'm not going to ask you, have you read these books since you were saved? I'll ask, have you read these in the last two months? And then I'd like to have you get acquainted with the missionary journeys of Paul. I'm intense on this. It'd be a tragedy for a person to graduate from Dallas Seminary and not know the missionary journeys of Paul. So what I'd like to have you do before you ever get to class is to take your Bible and start with Acts 13 and take a map and put it right by your Bible and then trace out where Paul went on each journey. I want to know which cities he visited, what happened in each city, and just, just get the 
the total of these first three missionary journeys. I'm not going to consider the journey to Rome in Acts 27. But I'm concerned about those first three missionary journeys because we want to plug Paul's missionary, Paul's epistles, into those journeys as much as is possible. So learn those carefully. I've been known to ask, for instance, where did Paul get a haircut? That sounds so silly, but it's a main point. Paul got a haircut because he had taken a vow. And where did that, why did he take, take that vow? And why was it consummated at this particular city? Well, we'll talk about those things when we get in the book of Acts. Galatians, of course, has some very important passages, as well as 1 Corinthians, dealing with uh, the local church. I'm looking forward to being with you very, very much. By the way, I should say that we'll have quizzes on those missionary journeys. Um, there'll be the first quiz on Tuesday morning uh, on the first missionary journey. Wednesday, the first two missionary journeys. Thursday, the first three missionary journeys. Friday, the same three missionary journeys. I want you to know those journeys. As you can tell, I'll be stiff on this one. So please learn those missionary journeys and we can go through the book of Acts. Looking forward to being with you very, very much. May the Lord bless you abundantly.